Hi folks, you may well be wondering why we're sitting here in hats. One of the reasons is we're taking ourselves far too seriously. So the hats are just to make sure you don't. You may well think we're talking through them. This would normally be Phil's rant. <laughs> um, but he says he doesn't want to. You may believe that, I don't. There's quite a lot of music you could, could have for the background music. Men without hats, men with hats. <laughs> hats and hats. And what's that um, Scottish song about ranting Robin or is it an Irish song? Ranting Robin, Robin, or something like that. Not a clue. Not a clue. That's you. So, Phil, what particularly upset you this week? Um, well, that whole bit about Scotland, well, that, of, of getting thrown out of the EU and sitting and thinking, well, yeah, we'll start our own European Union. Well, well, that's we'll, a Norway. We'll join. This we'll, whole idea, it can actually be a win win situation. I mean, Think positive about it. Well, we can. We're sitting up here. We, we aren't having to pay money to the European Union. Yeah, we get a fish back. Yeah, and no, don't, don't forget that as well. They're drying out down south. We could be piping oil, water, electricity, everything. You know, we're in a win-win situation here. Start thinking of the positive. Um, apart from these people there that are just oh, doom, doom. It's like it's doom. like Dad's army. That guy. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh, they're all doomed. We're all, all doomed. doomed. Is that why you're wearing the hat? It is, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Well, what, what about your uh, your personal friend, almost, Tony Blair? They come in persona non grata in Scotland. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good one. Uh, Margot MacDonald with her, uh, her motion, um, and which you would never believe seems to have the full backing of the SMP MSPs. But it'd be quite interesting to see how many. Um, What's this motion? It's to change the law. In Scotland? Yeah. Um, to in, to, so you can comply with international law because at the moment the only way you actually end up in the Hague or end up in the international courts of law is if you're kind of African and kind of black oh, you if want you're Blair? white you seem to get away with it you want Tony Blair to go to, to be in court in Scotland oh yeah as a war criminal well he is a war criminal not as well. he, he is a war criminal not just Tony Blair allegedly, allegedly, Phil. Allegedly. allegedly oh yeah let's not get sued yeah. everybody knows who we are now we've got a banner I'm sorry do you like our banner no. I, I've got a wee message to Tony sue me Sue me, Mr. War Criminal, you know. Uh, well, I mind when we, we did have Sherry Blair um, up in Edinburgh um, meeting the local Labour Party and to come along, and I didn't go because I knew I just couldn't resist to ask her, excuse me, what's it like getting here five times a night from a war criminal, you know? <laughs> oh, five times a night. That's, what, that's, that's her quote. War that was her quote, that Tony sometimes gives it five times a night. Um, do you know why that is? That's because he went to an old boys' school. Yes. Ah, he's he's which he won't be able to come back and visit if he's a walker or not. Anyway, shall we wear these hats next weekend? Not this weekend. Will we? Don't forget the march. Not this 22nd, Saturday, but twenty second September. Yeah, eleven o'clock. And the well, medals. There's We're the all politics the for freedom. But uh, look, look at it. It's independence for Scotland. Um, dot something or other. Um, but have a look at the bands and all the entertainment. It's going to be a really, really good and day. And if you want to go all night, even the nightclubs, are, there's, there's, there's special nightclub events as yep. well. All over, right through the night. It's going to be a hell of a day. 11 o'clock at the Meadows, 12 o'clock takeoff, 1 o'clock in Princess Street Gardens. Um, and you've got bands oh, yeah. and parties all day. I just suddenly remember, slightly back to the FMQ's review, we all forgot to mention quite an interesting thing that Salmon said. What was it? Passport... To independence and freedom. And freedom. freedom. He doesn't. It's not. That's that. That could be regarded as a slip, perhaps. Because, but it's regarded. I think I've had quite a relaxed week. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, this no, is kind I, of. It, in, ter in terms of anger, no, I've not really been angry yet this week. I'm, I'm waiting for it. I thought today somebody posted on Twitter a, a, a link to uh, an article in the Telegraph about uh, our friends, the Tories in the south and their uh, plans for universal benefit and fights between Osborne and, uh, and uh, IDS, the quiet man. Um, that, I think, is something I could get very angry about. It's, it, because it, it was interesting in terms of FMQs today that Ruth Davidson goes on a computer system um, for managing the health service, and that is part of what's behind the article in Telegraph today, is the computer system and the... Um, ability for things to go wrong as we and, do. And the fact that a lot of people can't access yeah. the information. I mean, I, at some point, I can't actually disagree with the thought behind it. At some point, everybody has to be online, the money it'll save, the admin, etc, etc, etc. But in something like benefits, you need to be able to look somebody in the eye.
Mm-hmm. You need to have somebody to go to to explain your special circumstances. You know, you can't work because your granny's got Alzheimer's and they can't get her in hospital, somebody has to look mm-hmm. after her. Whatever it is, the, the thing that the Tories will use it for, it's just another big stick to beat people who can't fight back. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's yeah. worse than that, right? It's, yeah. it's a bit more thought through than that. And the idea that everybody would be in line is, is a no-brainer. It's not going to happen. There's, you're about under 90% literate in Scotland, literacy rate. So there's 10% of people out there that can't write their names or enumerate, let alone get onto a computer. And because of that, with, 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 with uh, being illiterate, that's why when people go for their tax credits and everything else, and you get a huge swathe of, of right, that's why there's a huge amount of um, benefits that were unclaimed. Because people aren't literate enough to claim them. Um, so they think, well, if you've got all of that off because they're not literate, well, let's make them all go online. It's all about saving money. It's all about taking people, excluding people but, from the system but the problem because of their, it, their, their personal problems the problem in education. That Phil, is the lack of foresight involved in it. If you have swathes of people unable to buy food because they haven't got any money, they're going to steal. Oh, there's a good point. They I think they steal. I mean, last year's English riots, I mean, I'm sorry, from this perspective, it was predictable. Oh, totally. And yet, you know, the, the mainstream media in, in London was all, oh no, just bash the poor, they're just shocking, they're disgusting, feral underclass. Well, how do you think you get a feral underclass? That's the result. By treating them like they're feral. Yeah. But I had quite an interesting online discussion with an American guy, a guy from Ohio. And my point was, what you should actually do is stop giving the banks any money and give everybody who's on less than £200 a week an extra 20 quid. And he's like, that's just ridiculous. That doesn't occur in the world. It's no, but they'll spend it. Mm-hmm. And the people that are working, the shopkeepers, pubs, small businesses, will get that extra income. And, and they will spend it. it. The poor will what spend is the it. point of giving rich people money mm-hmm. to score it all away? Guy couldn't you see it. Just couldn't see it. And this guy is blue collar, right? He, he works in a, in a factory. Um, and I was amazed. They call themselves middle, they call those people middle class in America. Yeah. As long as you're not in the underclass, there's no such thing as a working class in America. People on fifteen thousand dollars a year and living in a trailer are cl- classify themselves as middle class. Actually, I heard this morning that, that there is an official. Um, it's not a relative thing for poverty in in America. It's tr- if you're less than on less than income is less than twenty four thousand dollars a year, you're officially poor in America, and fifteen percent of Americans are poor, so and they don't have a safety net of a national health service or a welfare system like we got. So if you haven't got it in America, isn't you? Yeah. Go away and die. Um, that's basically, and I wish people would stop looking at America. I mean, it, it's it's a horrific. No, place. no, no. People have to. I'm start. sorry, in Europe. We need to look east. We need to look in Europe. No, but you can't look, look at America. Quality is alive. Better standards alive. People alike. have to start looking at America, especially the health system. What because health system? That's where Westminster's taking. Oh yes, mm-hmm. that's where. Yeah. Mean, there's people. I've watched a documentary, like a doctor that goes around. Now this guy turns up once a year. In these small, well, small towns, towns of three, four thousand people. America, and there are thousands of people turn up, yeah, because it's the only way they can get medication. One guy turned up with a chronic back problem, had to work, basically worked, lay on the floor all night, got up, went to work, simply couldn't do it. Need an operation. Here's your choice, mate: twenty-five thousand dollars for the operation that will sort you. We can cure your problem. Can't afford it. Have to live with it. Yeah, and that is exactly where we're going because, well, taking we're, what we're going going back, well, it was it was a an article a few well, weeks ago by okay. Ian Bell, and and he has his problems with independence. He says, you know, and the SNP. He says, but when I look at the alternative, which is in Westminster, you know, that's it. it kind of it, it, it kind of clarifies it inside your head that you know. Well, where you've got to go, where you don't really have any choice, because this is going to, and with the gerrymandering that they were going to do with the boundaries, which, you know, now they've fallen out with the Liberals, that they're not going to get. You would never get a a Labour government, and then actually, really, be very totally honest, and look at the 13 years of a Labour government we had, what they could have done, and they did nothing apart from murder people, pander, enrich themselves, everything else. Um, I mean, an appalling bunch. Thank you, Phil, for the round. Knew we'd get you there. I know. Got there in the end.
Anyway, <laughs> welcome to our new set. Welcome, and don't forget, this banner will be marching. Look for our banner on the march. Thank you for listening. I hope we? you were mildly we? amused. And have a good week. Are we taking this on the march then? Yeah. yeah. So I need to get polls for it then. You promised to get polls. That's fine. I'll measure Thank it. Thank you very much, guys.